thanks to the support as a channel member, Nick Collard. Believe me, it surprised me as much as it surprised you. If you'd have asked me what my price was to uh, to get back on board with this project, I don't. I, I don't think I'd have believed me if I'd have said all I needed was a seventeen million pound striker from Celtic. Hello and welcome to part 88 of the Greek Odyssey. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we have both legs of our first knockout round game in the Champions League against Inter Milan. This is an Inter who are currently top of Serie A and uh, they're, quite, they're quite good at doing football, apparently, which we're not going to let that get us down. We've, we've fallen at this hurdle before and fingers crossed we won't fall here and we're probably going to get knocked out here again although there has been transfer business since the last time you were with me quite a lot of transfer business i don't know if any of the failed transfers are still showing on here um probably none of the really big ones um we actually had a 60 million pound offer for acosta from a chinese club that we accepted and he turned them down and gradually different chinese clubs kept coming back with lower and lower offers um he, he, we were accepting him down to about 45 million. He kept turning down the moves. As you can see, the most recent one at 42 and a half million, I've turned down. Similar story with Sanchez, but smaller numbers. Um, we accepted a, a deal with a total value of 32 and a half million pounds for him, but he's rejecting the move. It's not that I've necessarily decided they're the two non-EU players I need to push out. It's more that they're the two there's interest in. We also accepted a 30 million pound offer for Milo from a Chinese club earlier in the window. And that was turned down also, and he turned that down also. So believe it or not, all our players want to stay and play in the Champions League for a successful Greek club rather than going off to China. I can kind of understand it, but it does mean it's going to be a little bit harder to decide which one of these to sell and how much for, because to give it some balance, Acosta, who we got a £60 million offer for and he turned down, Paris Saint-Germain came in and offered £12 million for him, which I ain't selling him for £12 million. Although... I'm guessing at least one of these, if not both of these two, will be going for probably less than I would like in the summer because the world will realise we have to sell one of them because they're not both going to fit in the squad. Um, there has been other business outside of them, though. Um, the notable out is Salakis, the goalkeeper, the Greek international goalkeeper, who came in in January last year. Um, he forced through a move out of the club. He decided he want to leave, wanted to leave. Valencia came in and offered £5 million for him. I turned it down because it didn't seem like we were turning enough of a profit for a player who'd actually played quite a few games for us. He'd played 21 league starts in a year. That's not too bad for our backup goalkeeper. Shows just how much I've been rotating to try and keep him happy. Um, but he decided he wanted to go to Valencia. So I, I tried to force the price up. He got in a mood. He ended up handing in a transfer request. And rather than having a miserable player, I just let him go. But we have replaced him. And um, we've replaced him with this guy, Yannick Doring, who's an Austrian under-21 international who's come in from Borussia Dortmund. Two-star current ability, four-star potential ability. So not up there at Tanessi's level, but as good as Salakis was. Um, he's actually played 13 times for Borussia Dortmund this year, and we signed him for £53,000. I don't get it either, but it seems like a perfectly good swap deal almost that we've done there um sell someone for five million buy their replacement for fifty thousand that's that's proper wheeler dealer business and there's been a couple of gifts from past kev that have arrived in january as well um, oscar jimenez is a colombian right back 18 years old five star potential needs to go out on loan hasn't done yet he'll both him and this guy tata um who's an 18 year old brazilian with four and a half star potential both of these guys expect them to be going on loan to spain this summer um but the big signing um, is, where is he? There he is, Ryan Allen, our 22-year-old Scottish international striker. 33 goals from 41 caps for Scotland already at 22 years old. Three and a half star current ability, four and a half star potential ability. As a striker, right up there over Costa, little bit better than Carnivale. Um, he can play on either wing as well. We've actually been playing him more on the wing. There's been a few games recently where we've had a Costa up front and Carnivale and Allen on the, on the two wings, and they look very impressive. Um, he was he was Celtic's star man when they beat AC Milan. And now we've taken him off him. He was actually out of contract at the end of the season. And there was lots of clubs sniffing around. We tried to sign him on a pre-contract and he did the thing where he was keeping his options open. But Man United were interested. Uh, Bayern Munich were interested. All the big clubs were interested. And presumably he was telling them all, I'm keeping my options open. So we had that £20 million sat there that Mrs. Wearmouth gave me to cheer me up. 
So I thought, why not just try and buy him? If everyone in Europe wants him, let's just offer Celtic some money. And it worked. So we've got him in on a four-year contract um, and kind of got in ahead of a lot of the major clubs in Europe who all wanted him. He's lightning quick. He's a good finisher. And as you can see, a proven goal-scoring record at international level as well, um, even if it is only for Scotland. But, you know, 33 international goals. You could argue scoring 33 international goals for Scotland is a lot harder than scoring 33 international goals for Brazil because presumably you don't get as many chances. Um, in addition to him, we've also brought in this guy, Sonny, who's a 17-year-old um, all-the-nationalities player. He was born in Brazil, um, but he's playing for Portugal under-21s and he was playing in Spain where he also has Spanish nationality as well. So lots of nationalities for Sonny, but he's come in as a young 17-year-old as another striker. Um, and lastly, Joseba Esparza is a 19-year-old Spanish um, attacking midfielder, two-star current ability, four-star potential. Spain is the new Brazil, as far as I'm concerned. And we've, uh, I, th I think we've spent quite wisely there, bringing in some decent players. Didn't actually manage to sell anyone we wanted to sell, but we've definitely improved the squad and got to the point where we could afford to let um, Salakis go. We can afford to let Acosta go because we've now got Alan in. And Alan's certainly more my kind of striker than Acosta is anyway. So I think... More more decent transfers. Form-wise, there's been a couple of iffy defeats in the league. We've lost to both Aris and Offi in the league. I might have been over-rotating. We are still top by 13 points, so we don't need to worry too much about it. Lencina is the top scorer in the division. Um, but it has been the time since we've been away. It's definitely been the story of the rise of Unai Dominguez, who a few people were calling a flop last season. Um, it's taken him a little bit of time to find his feet, but he now has the highest average rating in the league. Um, he's considered a four and a half star ability, world class mid central midfield player um, who is better than Duffy, better than Cordoba. Um, he's averaging a 7.85 this season, eight goals, five assists, and he's now considered our key player. Unai Dominguez is the one. I knew he was. I, knew, I earmarked him as my boy two years ago. Might have overpaid a little bit for him at the time, but when he's the, one of the top midfielders in Europe, like he is now. 40 million seems like a bit of a steal and having him and Duffy together in midfield is going to make it a lot easier to move Cordoba on in the summer if he ends up being the non-EU player that I feel the need to sell to make to hit the non-EU criteria stuff. But that's enough background and that's got you fully caught up. Now we need to go and take our medicine against Inter Milan. We're at home in the first leg because we only scraped through our group. So the goal really... Two goals. Try and find a try and find a victory from somewhere. And try and avoid conceding a goal. That's the plan. I don't know how successful it's going to be, but we're going with Tennessee in goal. A back four of Kansarovic, Hernandez, Criado, and Solazano. And Michaelis has been injured since before the last episode. I think he is slowly but surely coming back to fitness, but he has been out for a long time. Um, only six weeks apparently. Although it's the second time this season he sprained his knee ligaments. So. Possibly something of a recurring injury for Michaelis. The same major injury twice in the same season. Always a little bit of an alarm bell. He's on the bench today, but as you can see, not close to match fit. Uh, Milo's going to be at the base of the midfield. Dominguez and Duffy ahead of him. Dominguez is so good that he's forced Duffy into playing as a Mazala, who even as recently as the last episode, I was telling you how Duffy has to play as the playmaker because he's our best player. He ain't anymore. And uh, we had Tottenham and Liverpool both sniffing this window just gone, but only offering like £25 million. Similar to Dominguez, we brought them both in for £40 million at roughly the same time. But if they want Duffy, I'm not against selling him because we've got Dominguez now and they're very similar players, but it's going to cost 60 or £70 million. I'm not selling him a loss. I want a big profit on players like that. Otherwise, I'll just keep him because he's non-EU. He's Sorry, he's EU. There's no reason not to keep him. He's awesome. He likes it here. He's been here forever. I don't feel the need to sell him unless it's a ridiculous offer. Um, and then we've got Carnavali on the left wing, Lencina on the right, and Ryan Allen making his Champions League debut for us up front. But of course, not his first Champions League appearance of the season because he was very much involved in Celtic's run to uh, nearly causing us a problem in our group. So let's get into the game. Let's hope that... Uh, that we've improved the team sufficiently from where we were in the group stages, both in terms of um, adding Allen as an extra an, an extra dimension, an extra type of player. He's almost like a combination between the two strikers we had before. Carnavali's quick and a good finisher, but tiny. Allen's a little... There's a little bit more about Ryan Allen 
Um, six foot tall, got a little bit more oomph about him, um, a little bit, a lot better in the air than Carnavali. So he provides a lot of the stuff that Acosta provided as well, but he's quicker than Acosta. So he's kind of my perfect striker. I hope it works out. Uh, but also the switch to the vertical tiki taka as well, I think has been a big improvement. And of course, the rise of Unai Dominguez. We are a different side to the one that really struggled in the group stages. And hopefully we can surprise a few people across two legs against Inter. Salazano in the crossing position. Duffy's there and his header goes just over. That would have been a bit of a moment. Paul Duffy, now they're flying Mazala for us. If he'd managed to keep his header down... It cements his uh, it cements his place as a super duper Mazala, which would be absolutely lovely. We have tried both Dominguez and Duffy playing in the deep midfield role as we continue to try and find a way to make Milo surplus to requirements, but neither of them really worked out there. And I think we, uh, for some reason, despite all my other teams that I do this ticky tacker with, playing with the playmaker at the base of the midfield, this team just seems to play better. When we've got someone just there kicking people like Milo, like Michaelis, um, like Glebru in the past, and the uh, the playmaking being done a little bit further forward through these boys that we've got in midfield, um, right? We have been the better team here. Keep doing what you're doing. We will be fine. Um, we've we've actually not done too bad. We are ahead on clear cut chances. Dominguez, let's show show everyone how good you are now, Unai. Um, Salazano charging into the area, plays across to Allen, and that feels like it should have been a goal. Ryan Allen with quite a big miss. I do not want the last time I was this excited about a new striker. You all hated him. Um, I don't want him to be the new Soma. He is good. I promise. Oh, Salazano's given away a penalty, and that is that's sloppy. It wasn't even necessary. Um, and now all eyes on Tennessee as we need him to make a big save here because. Not only is this going to be an away goal, but it also puts us behind in the tie. And that's problematic on multiple fronts because for us to have a chance now in this tie, realistically, we need to score three goals in the rest of this second half. If it's 3-1, I feel like we've got a chance. 2-1, I'd always be happy with 2-1 away from home in the first leg, a 2-1 defeat. I'm certainly not happy being 1-0 down. I thought we were going to be better than this. Um, Alan's anxious. Which is weird, because he's been so good in the Champions League for Celtic this year. Um, but I think we are going to take him off and bring on Acosta. That hasn't really worked. Carnavali can come off for Sanchez on the left-hand side as well. Um, are we doing a tri I don't think we are going to do a triple. We'll leave it there for now. We'll bring those two on and hope that between the two of them, they can conjure something up, bring on our two, Argent two of our Argentinian contingent. Um, we've obviously got Corboda there as another one of our Argentinian boys. Um, Kansarovic now. Um, trying to trying to do something. Acosta's drifted out wide. Um, Dominguez to Kansarovic again. Back to Dominguez. We've seen him score from there before. And he's done it again. Unai Dominguez. I told you how good he was before the match started. And that is a huge goal from Unai Dominguez. A ninth goal of the season from him. And it's a beauty. You can't give him space. He's, he's surprising people. People don't expect it from him. Because he's not ever really done it before. He's just had a good run in the team. The rotation we've been doing in the league has suited him massively because he got rotated into the team and basically played every game for ages. And now he's awesome. Cordoba's going to come on for the final 10 minutes for Duffy, who also wasn't having the best of times. But we know how good uh, a Mezala Cordoba is. And if we can grab a winner here, I know it wouldn't be, it doesn't make it three, but two is still better than one. I can do maths sometimes. Solazano trying to make up for his penalty, uh, his penalty conceder, conceding sentences. Um, it's forced to corner anyway, and it's going to be Milo to take, and it's going to be an in-swinger, and it hopefully aimed at this near post. It's not. It's gone to the far post, but there's Criado, and there's his first goal of the season, and it's 2-1 to Apollon. Could, could we actually still do this, boys and girls? All of a sudden, the game's been turned on its head. Inter will... Don't get me wrong. Inter are still going to be quite comfortable with this as a scoreline. I certainly would be in their put in their situation. But the fact it's happening late puts that little bit of doubt in your mind as a manager where you, you think you've got the job done. Ten minutes to go. Job is done here. And then all of a sudden, the uh, it's not done anymore. And you feel like you've, you've probably got a little bit more to do to justify how well you've played in the game up until that point. They are now pushing on and trying to do exactly that. So it would be nice to win the ball back off them and go and grab a third. A third. Good. 
Good use of your THs there, Kev. I thought you'd learn not to do that anymore. Hernandez to Tanesi, who just lumps it forward, and it's found Sanchez almost accidentally. Oh, and that's a poor missed header, and we've got away with one there a little bit. Is that Criado? Or I think it's Criado who plays on the right. It is. He, I mean, he's scored, but he needs to do better there with his header. Um, he's supposed to be our stopper, and that's not what we needed to see. It, it does feel a lot like they just stepped up a gear. They went behind and like, oh, right, well, in that case, we need to try again. And it's like they can turn it on when they want. And at 2-2, two -two, they're going to be utterly delighted. They've got their two away goals. We've now got to go there and win, basically, because we're not going to draw 3-3 three -three with them, are we? We've got to go to, to Italy and beat the team who are top of the Italian league. And that, after how much we struggled with AC Milan in the group stage, feels like it might be a step beyond where we are right now. and We might be headed for another first round exit which makes me very sad. Let's go do the second leg. Multiple victories for our rotated teams later, including a 4-0 win over Olympiakos in the first leg of the semi-final of the Greek Cup. Um, and we... Uh, we uh, It's second leg time. Um, Acosta's picked up an injury, which is a little bit of a problem because he was just hitting some good form. But he's now got a torn back muscle and is effectively out for the rest of the season, which is a little bit of a shame because, as you could see, he was banging in the goals for us all of a sudden, which was nice. So we've now got to try and shuffle the attack around again. Um, Carnavali's just recovering from an injury of his own, uh, but I'm going to stick him up front. Alan's going to go out onto the left-hand side as a slight change from what we did in the last game. So we're going Tanesi in goal, a back four of Kansarovic, and now recovered Michaelis alongside Hernandez and Solazano. Milo at the base of the midfield, Dominguez and Duffy ahead of him, and then Alan, Carnavali and Lencina as our front three. Um, Claudio Sanchez is playing the best football he's played since the immersion, immersion, emergence of Antoine German as well. So we've got both of those boys on the bench and it is nice to have some, some very good attacking players on the bench. I've just said, I expect a win and it's upset everybody, but we've got a win. We, we can't go into games like this. It's the first knockout round of the Champions League. We can't go into games like this saying, oh, well, we'll probably lose. We've been in the Champions League for six or seven years at this point. As, as sooner or later, we've got to start trying to win it. And okay, maybe this isn't the year that we try and win it. But I think going into any game in the Champions League and not trying to win it for a team like us is silly. And these players need a little bit of a reality check, I think. Or maybe I need the reality check. But either way, Duffy is breaking clear here with the ball, having been part of the wall that blocked the original free kick. Unfortunately, it, there was a demonstration there that he doesn't really have the pace to be our long-term Mazala. I'm actually starting to think with the emergence of Dominguez as a real top-tier playmaker in central midfield, if we get Spurs and Liverpool and uh, English clubs hovering around Duffy again in the summer, I'm still not going to sell him for less than we paid for him, but I might be open to a little bit more negotiation to move Duffy on and really go with Dominguez in midfield. And we've got Laika, who is uh, really looking good as an option as Amazala, and uh, he could potentially be partnering Dominguez longer term. We've gone 1-0 down, I think. As much as it pains me to say it, with 75 minutes still to go, I think this might be it for our Champions League run again this year because, uh, I mean, we're not coming back from this, are we? 1-0 down on the night, 3-2 on aggregate, of course, in to have those two away goals as well. So we now know that with 75 minutes remaining, we've got to score two goals without reply as a minimum. And I think that is quite a tall order against what is a very good inter team. I mean, we couldn't have got a much in the, we couldn't have got a much harder draw in this uh, in this first knockout round. Really, it's they're top of the one of the third or fourth, what the third best team in Europe. I think. I think when we were looking at the coefficients most recently, it was Germany and France that we were chasing. So I think Italy was third on the leagues behind England and Spain, and Inter are top. So. It's the best team from the third best league in the world. We are going to struggle because we're like the sixth best team in the world. And yes, we're the best team from that league. Um, but we're not getting absolutely battered. But Inter are always going to edge it because not only have they got a higher quality of player, they've been here before as well. They know what they're doing. That's a great save from Tennessee. A really, really good save. I mean, I know some of you will say, Kev, you've been here before. You're quite familiar with the first knockout round. Yeah, I know. It's getting depressing. Um... Sanessi flapping at the corner a little bit there. Doesn't get anywhere near it, but luckily it goes out of play for a goal kick and we 
Um, we approach half time, and a goal before half time gives us a chance. But it doesn't look like it's going to happen, does it? We've had two shots in that first half. Um, right, we need a change of tact. Um, let's give the fans a performance despite being against the odds. Let's try that. A couple of them have gained confidence from that, which is a good thing. We are keeping an eye on Lencina, who's currently shown very frustrated. And we know how likely we are to get red cards in these big games. So if he starts to look like he's getting very, very, very frustrated... We have got Sanchez who can just come on and slot straight into that role. Or Carnavali could go over that side and German could come on onto the left. There's, uh, in fact, Carnavali's up front, isn't he? It's Alan who's up, who's out on the left at the moment. And that that hasn't really been working, I don't think. But then they've not really had much of the ball. So we've not really been able to see if it's working or not. Alan plays it out to Kansarovic. Dominguez, who really needs to get hold of this midfield and try and take control of the game a little bit. If he's serious about being a world-class player. Carnavali's in here, though, and... Probably needs to be applying the finish there. Um, he's, I mean, he's an Italian international striker. It's He should be capable of scoring against Inter. And I think if we were going to do it, he needed to score there. That was a big chance. Dominguez now with the cross, but it doesn't make it to any of our players. And now Inter get the ball back again and are looking to get a counter-attack of their own underway. We need to get a tackle in here, but they are coming at us in waves. Somebody please get the tackle in. Won't somebody get the tackle in? And it doesn't look like, oh, that's a that's a good interception from Kansarovic, I think that was. Um sliding in with the interception. Uh, but I think we need to we need to make a change. Then Cena's struggling. Um so we're gonna do we I think we are gonna bring German on and shuffle the midfield around completely. Or shuffle the attack around and go with this. We'll give Allen we'll give those two, Carnavali and Allen, in different roles, get ten minutes before Sanchez, for one, certainly comes on. And maybe Leica, and we go to a 4-2-3-1 or a diamond or something. I don't know. I don't know what we can do. We're mis it, Not having a Costa available is a problem. Dave's not in the Champions League squad, so we can't use him. Um, right, Carnavali's not having a good game. But actually, we don't have a striker on the bench, and I'm thinking we're going we're gonna to take Milo off and bring Sanchez on, and we're going to go two up top. And we, we've got to go for it a little bit. He wants to be a false nine, so let him be a false nine. These two in midfield, if we put him there doing that, and he can go a little bit more further forward, swap those two around, because Dominguez has got a little bit more pace. And we've got to try something a little bit different. We do need to keep an eye on Carnavali. If he doesn't pick up in this role, we've got Leica who can come on and play in behind Allen if need be. But come on, we need we need something, boys. Anything. Somebody do something. We'll take Alan off, bring Leica on. So Carnavali goes back up top again. Leica can go in there. He needs to go back to that. Try very attacking. We're just we're it's kind of random changes of combinations of players at this point. Which is always a sign that it's not gonna come off for you. And we just we're missing a Costa. He could have been a difference maker the form he was in, but alas, was not to be. We were very unlucky once again with the draw that we got, but ultimately, see Powak getting knocked out as well. It's going to be a hard draw in the knockout rounds of the Champions League every single time, and we need to figure out how to get through that. We might even need a slight adjustment to transfer policy and stop selling our world-class players when we get the big offers for them and really try and put together a team of world-class players. Because if this was a team... I know Lawson and Damien were a little bit different because they weren't here permanently. But I look at Bozic and I think, would what would Bozic contribute to that midfield? I know that was a while ago now. Maybe we should have kept Bozic around. Sension, what does he contribute to that team? Betrancourt. There's a few players that maybe we should be starting to... Even Pezic. Pezic is a big miss, more than anyone that I've just mentioned, possibly. Hmm. We go again next year. If you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.